Hi there, Andreas here with Express Pads Finger Drumming and today I'm going to explain the Archi MPD-232 software editor which you can download from the Archi website and when you open it for the first time it appears like this. So it resembles the hardware obviously, so you have on the left hand side the pad section, on the right hand side the controller section, the sequencer section and on the top you have in this blue area the parameters that you can change when you click a certain pad or control and as you notice only that area changes here on the left hand side this one is for global controls and that affect the whole preset furthermore you can see that there are four different banks per preset and those you can select by clicking on the capital letter buttons here and same with the control bank there you have three and those can be later on recalled independently from one another on the hardware. When you go to the pads um, and click on one, you can see that those are the values that you can change or the parameters that you can change. And the most important one is the type. And depending on the type, the parameters, the other parameters will change. And that means if you go to node, which is my main focus today here, you can change the MIDI channel, there are quite many. Then you can change the MIDI note, of course. And you can change aftertouch, which is important for finger drumming, because in finger drumming you should leave it off, because that's additional MIDI information that you actually don't need for finger drumming, and you don't want to occupy your MIDI bandwidth too much when it's sent from the hardware to the software via USB or MIDI. And so here I suggest to leave it off. The trigger mode is also important for finger drumming. It should be momentary because hitting a pad then fires off a one-shot sample while in toggle mode you hit the pad once, a sound starts sustaining and when you hit this pad again it stops sustaining. Furthermore you have the MIDI to DIN feature here. That means that uh, either you can send MIDI data to your MIDI output here, so the physical MIDI output which is on the device or you leave it at off if you only use the USB channel or the USB cable with your software. Then also quite nice if you perform live a lot in, in dark environments then you can change the pad color so you have the on color, you have the off color and you can change it for each and every pad and that way you can color code your setup which is really nice. Then when you go to the control section for the knobs you have different types. Most likely you will use the continuous controller and the aftertouch settings here. And there again the type determines which other parameters you can see in this area. So when you put it to continuous controller you can also here change the MIDI channel, um, change the MIDI CC, so the number uh, of the MIDI CC. And you can change, of course, the minimum and the maximum value. And here also you can change whether it should be sent to the MIDI output or not. In the faders area, pretty much the same here. You have continuous controller, you have after touch, and the settings are the same. And what I really find interesting is uh, the behavior of the buttons that you can change. So when you click on that, you have the option to determine uh, the keystroke that is sent by this button. And that's really a handy feature because you can then uh, send information that is usually sent by a computer keyboard. So either you take the alphabet or you take the numbers, function uh, keys or arrows and so on. And that means in a live setup you can just get rid of your computer keyboard and control the software completely with the MPD-232 which is is an awesome feature if you ask me. Then you have a key 2 feature here which is actually a key combination that you can send and that works the same way like uh, the key 1 here just that it sends combinations. So that's um, all about the controls and the pads. Let's now have a look at the menu. You have the file menu which contains the standard options like new, open preset, close window, save, save as and then you have the options to load from hardware and to send to hardware. And when you, for example, choose send to hardware, you need to select a preset. And once you've done so, you can send it and it will be on your hardware. 
Then let's go to the tools menu. In the tools menu, you have one fantastic tool, which is the auto populate tool. And this one lets you in one go change many, many parameters at once. So you could, for example, tell your MPD 232 to erase aftertouch for all pads on all banks. And you, the only thing you need to do is you need to check this box, put this to off, choose the, the banks that you want to send it to. So A, B, C, and D, say apply, and all the aftertouch from each and every pad will be gone. And the same goes for all the other parameters that we touched before. And it goes for the pads, the knobs, the faders, and the switches. And this is really awesome. It's a great time saver. The next one is also a big time saver. So if you have multiple presets stored on your computer, you can all send them at once to the different um, preset slots on the hardware device. And the only thing you need to do is you need to browse for such an such a preset here and then you can use different ones and then you just send them. The next one is the global settings area and this one is important as well because it contains the general pad sensitivity settings over here. So these three fields determine how your pads will react um, on, your, on your hits. And pet gain actually means that you will have an increase of velocity when you hit a pet, the higher you, go, you choose the number here. Um, the pet threshold determines how sensitive your pet in general is. So um, if it's very low, your pets will trigger a sound even if you hit it softly. If it's at 10, then it might not trigger a sound at a very soft hit. And furthermore, you have the pet curve. I like to leave it at linear. But if you, for example, have an environment where you need to play very loud drums, but you don't want to hit the pads too hard, then you can change it to be logarithmic one or two. I think two is more intense than logarithmic one. And the opposite is the exponential curve, where you rather get low velocity hits, although you hit the pads quite hard. So if you really want to have a very sensitive setting, use a higher gain value, a very low pad threshold value and um, yeah as I said choose one of these curves as you like. The other parameters here I think I explained the transport to DIN already and um, MIDI clock means that you either choose the internal MPD 232 clock or if you have it in a DAW environment and you want the sequencer on the device play in sync with your host you should use external. Um, what I like is to turn the tempo LED off, otherwise it gets on my nerves if I see it for far too long. The tap average is the amount of times you need to hit the tap button in order to capture the right tempo that you are hitting it with. Then you have the LCD contrast. I think 50 is the average and it works well for me. Then note display that can either be a value or a number, so that depends on how you want to see it here. And the common MIDI channel can also be changed here. And finally, we have the sequence edit, but I won't go through this in this video because that's too much for this video. I will make a separate video for this one here. And finally, you have the window menu and the help menu, but these don't contain any really important features here, except the user guide, of course. This is always important. That's actually everything I can say about the RK MPD-232 software editor. I like it a lot. It's very clear to me. Uh, there are a lot of handy features uh, for mass changes, for mass uploads of uh, presets and so on. And that will really speed up your workflow. And also, if you are interested in finger drumming, you can download all the presets uh, for the MPD-232. Load them with the mass upload tool um, at once and you can start finger drumming right away. Finally, if you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to stay informed of finger drumming and receive more information about hardware and software and see reviews and so on, please subscribe. And lastly, if you're interested in finger drumming, please visit the ExpressPads website. There you will find a lot more information about finger drumming, a getting started guide with the ExpressPads finger drumming technique. and. I hope this will help you getting better on finger drumming. Thank you very much. Bye.